This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. This is the fourth and the last lecture on Chapter 7. Uh, and as I said in the earlier lectures, almost any investment appraisal in the exam, almost all of it will be based on discounted cash flow, MPVs, possibly internal rates of return. However, uh, you are expected to be aware of two other approaches that businesses may use to alternative approaches, uh, which occasionally bits of them get asked, but never to any great degree. And the first is what we call the accounting rate of return, which is a profits measure. Uh, you may remember I said in an earlier chapter that with discounted, uh, an earlier lecture rather, with discounted cash flow, we're looking at cash flows because it's cash we need to pay dividends, it's cash we need to buy new machines. But I did say that shareholders, the first thing they're going to look at is the profits. They're likely to be more concerned about the profitability. If profits have gone up, that looks good. If they've gone down, it's bad. Well, accounting rate of return is a profit measure, and you'll see in the notes the definition. It's the average profits per year from an investment as a percentage of the average book value, the average value in the statement of financial position, because you know that's what shareholders receive. Statement of profit and loss. Look at the profit. Statement of financial position. And they can see the, the the book value, the carrying value uh, of the assets. Uh, to show you how we do it, example 8 is a very simple one, but any of these in the exam are kept very simple in this way. They don't ask complicated ones. A machine will cost 80000 It has an expected life of four years with an expected scrap value of 10000 The net operating cash flows each year are as follows, 20, 30, 40, 10. It wants the accounting rate of return. Well, let's first of all work out the average profit per year. Well, we're told what the cash flows are each year. And so the total operating cash flow is 20, 30, 40, 10. A total of 100,000. But of course, that's not the same as the profits because profit is calculated after depreciation. So to get the total profit we're making, what's the total depreciation going to be? Well, I know there are various ways we could depreciate, but surely, in total, if it cost 80 and the scrap value is 10, in total, the depreciation will be 70,000. So the total profit will be 30,000. We want the average profit per year. Well, it's lasting four years, so the average profit thirty thousand divided by four is what seven thousand five hundred. Okay, so there's our average profit. We want to express that as a percentage of the average book value, carrying value in the statement of financial position. So what's the average book value? Now here be careful, people do funny things here. When we buy the machine, it costs 80. So it'll sit there in the statement of financial position on the balance sheet at 80,000. Each year will depreciate so each year, the value will fall. And if there was no scrap value, it would start at 80, it would fall down to zero. 
the average would be halfway. 80 down to zero, on average, it would be 40,000. What's happening here? There is a scrap value. So it starts at 80, depreciate, it falls each year down to 10. Well, surely, if it went from 80 down to zero, you'd say the average was 40. If it's start with 80, and if it's still worth 10 at the end, the average is a bit higher. It's 80 plus 10 over 2. The average value in the balance sheet or statement of financial position. 80,000 at the start, the scrap 10,000 at the end. The average divided by 2, so on average 45,000. And therefore the uh, accounting rate of return Average profit, 7,500. Uh, average book value, 45,000. As a percentage, I get 16.67%. Sorry, the pen seems to be going funny, 16.67. Now, as to how we'd use that, uh, companies that are looking at the accounting rate of return, they would have a target, you know, perhaps their existing return on capital employed. If at the moment, overall, the business is getting 10% return, this is more than 10, it would be good. On the other hand, if at the moment they're getting an overall profit return of 20%, then perhaps we'd reject this at 16. So you'd compare it with a target in deciding whether to go ahead or not. So, I say anything on accounting rate of return would be pretty simple in the exam. Primarily, we look at discounted cash flow, but just to be safe, be aware of it. Finally, there's one more method that companies use, something called the payback period. And what the payback period is, here we, again we do look at cash flows, but it's the number of years it takes in cash terms to get back the original investment. Now, I'm not writing that because it's all typed uh, on the next page, but let me show you what I mean in the example. A machine costs 80,000, so we pay out 80,000 now. For the payback period, we say, well, how many years will it take us to get back that 80,000? In the first year, the cash we get, it's cash inflow, it's cash use here. We get cash of 20,000. So how much have we had in total? 20,000. Well, I want to know how long to get back 80, so that's not enough. In the second year, we get another 30,000 cash. So how much have we had in total? We've now had a total of 50,000. It's still not enough. We need 80. In the third year, we get 40,000. So how much have we had in total? We've now had 90. We have got back the full 80. Now, two things here. One thing we can immediately say is we get the money back within three years. Two years we've only had 50, by the end of three years we've had 90. Um, we can be more precise if we assume that the money is coming in evenly. So, you know, after the second year we've had 50, we need another 30. 
If we assume that that 40 in the third year is coming in evenly over the year, then to get the extra 30 we need to make it up to 80 will be 30 fortieths. It'll be three quarters of the third year. After two years, you've had 50. If the third year 40 is coming in evenly, to get an extra 30,000, I'll take that fraction of the third year at 2.75 years. So that's how we calculate the payback period. Uh, the way it's used, again, the company will have a target that we're only interested in projects that pay for themselves within four years, let's say. Well, either it does or it doesn't. The reason it's important to measure this is although on the one hand we're looking at cash flows, and cash is important, we said earlier, however we choose to appraise, we're basing it on um, oh dear, what's the word? Sorry. We're basing it on estimates. You know, and then we're looking at profits of cash. We're estimating, oh, 20,000 in the first year, 30,000 in the second, and so on. And I'm sure you'd agree that whereas estimates for next year, the year after, we may be able to estimate fairly accurately, the further into the future we're estimating, the more it becomes almost a guess. If I got it out of a project where the payback period was 10 years, then again, how on earth did I manage to come up with an estimate for 8 years' time, 9 years' time, 10 years' time? I'd be very scared of doing it, because it might never pay for itself. On the other hand, if a project pays for itself within 2 or 3 years, I'm going to be much more confident that I will at least get the money back, and hopefully get carry on getting more afterwards. And so that's why payback period is, is important. Um, it's less affected by the uncertainty when we're estimating flows. Now I've shown you three methods, uh, discounted cash flow, NPV and IRR are both discounted cash flow, accounting rate of return and payback period. Theoretically, discounted cash flow is the best. Most investment appraisal questions in the exam are discounted cash flow. However, there's a logic to all three methods. Payback period is dealing to an extent with uncertainty of these estimates. Accounting rate of return looking at profitability. And what tends to happen is Companies will look at a range of measures. They won't just look at discounted cash flow. They just they won't just look at return on uh, capital on accounting rate of return. They'll look at several measures and sort of form an overall judgment. Anyway, there we are. That's the end of the F two revision. In the remaining chapters on um, this area of the syllabus. We'll look at, as I said earlier, how we get the cash flows in the first place in order to be able to do our discounted cash flow.